This is example four from lesson R.5. We're solving quadratic equations, but this time we're using the process of the square root property. Now, this only works when there's no middle term of a trinomial there. So you only got your leading term and you have your constant term there. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to have your leading term on one side of the equal sign and you want to have your constant term on the other side of the equal sign. Okay, so in part A, this is already done for me. So all I need to do is go ahead and square root both sides of the equation. Now keep in mind, whenever you have to write the square root into the problem, because the square root was not there to begin with, you do want to have the positive root and the negative root there. Over here, the radical and the two will cancel, leave us with the variable A. On the other side, 49 has a nice square root. It is seven, and we do want positive seven and negative seven, because both of those will give me a positive 49 when they're squared. All right, now for B, um, what a lot of people would want to do is go ahead and expand this side over here and have t plus four times t plus four, and then foil it out and have it equal to zero and solve it. But you can actually use the square root property on this one as well, because we can go ahead and square root the left-hand side of that equation, it is a perfect square. And then we can square root the other side of the equation as well. Even though 24 is not a perfect square, we can simplify that if there are any perfect squares inside there. Now, just like before, the radical and the two will cancel. That's going to leave me with just the t plus four. So this is just the part that was in parentheses. All right, and on the other side, well, we got to break down 24. So let's see, we've got four times six, and we've got two times two, so let's see, I two twos, over here I've got two times three, the square root means I need a pair, there's a pair of twos, and then this is not a matching pair, I've got a two and a three, so I'm going to multiply those back together and leave those underneath the radical there, so I have positive and negative two times the square root of six. Okay. Finally, we're trying to solve for t, so we can subtract 4 from both sides. These are not like terms because that one has a radical on it. This one does not. So it looks like my solution is going to be negative 4 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 6. 